What's up, everybody? Thanks, as always, for supporting the show. It would mean a lot to me if you would take a second to scroll down and hit that subscribe button to the Hoops Tonight YouTube channel, and then follow me on social media on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter so you guys don't miss any of our content over the course of this season. All right, let's talk some basketball. So let's talk about the summer. And I, I want to talk about kind of the stuff you talked about in the piece first, and then we'll talk about the... Um, uh, my kind of working theory because I have a, a like a, a a specific idea in mind for what the Lakers should do, but the three names I think you had mentioned in your piece were it was Trey Young, Donovan Mitchell, and Kyrie Irving. Correct, correct. Are those yeah. the three. Yeah. So uh, of those three names mentioned, is there a name in that group that the Lakers actually feel like they could like pull off? Because I specifically am worried about their ability to get into a a. a a beating war with teams that just have better assets to offer. And that that's certainly a factor. And, and, and that's the the other part of this of um, you can frame it as, well, we're going to have these three picks and, and now all of a sudden we can get into certain conversations and, and you can get into those conversations. But when it really comes down to some of the recent trades we've seen for stars and the, the, the price is continually rising and several teams across the league having an army of assets like Lakers get into a, a bidding war with Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City is going to win that bidding war every single time. And, and there are several mm -hmm. teams that can outbid them. And granted, some of those teams are smaller market teams where maybe a star doesn't necessarily want to go. And we do see uh, stars tend to want to go to the bigger markets. It's just the reality of of the NBA. Uh, but even some of the teams, you know, Philly has, uh, has a bunch of cap space this summer. Um, you know, they, they could get involved in things. New York is obviously, uh, becoming a destination and, uh, you know, they're putting together a, a team that looks like it, it might be able to make a, a deep playoff run. So th there are other Miami always looms as, as sort of this, this team with a bunch of, I mean, they have some young assets and Tyler hero, um, you know, Hami Hakez now has become a, a clear asset, uh, you know, Nikola Jovic, like th they have certain things that, that teams would want. So it's not just this clear cut and dry, like because the Lakers are willing to put three picks on the table, they're all of a sudden the front runner for all these guys. Like everyone, you know, for the most part wants to play for like Lakers are always on the list. At least when, when team, when a, a star, you know, submits the, the types of teams they'd be willing to play for. Uh, but they still have to outbid some of these teams and that's probably going to cost them Austin Reeves. Like that's kind of the other thing here is it's mm -hmm. on one hand, like the Lakers weren't willing to give up Austin Reeves at this deadline and people scoffed at the notion of, of them not wanting to give him up for anything below like an all-star level player. But now if you're going after the all-star level guys, you're putting Austin Reeves on the table and you're putting those three mm -hmm. picks, you're putting multiple pick swaps, you're putting second round picks. So, um, from my understanding, you know, I reported on Trey Young last year, uh, coming out of uh, the, the the playoff run that Trey Young was someone to keep an eye on with the Lakers. There's the obvious clutch connection, uh, but but also he fits the mold of they've wanted a point guard. They've wanted a, a superstar level point guard who can run the offense, take some of the burden off LeBron, uh, you know, run pick and rolls with LeBron at the end of games and, and just, you know, be a, a high level shot creator where the Lakers can kind of stagger it and have that guy run the offense when LeBron's off the floor, when AD's off the floor, and not really lose anything. So uh, to them, Trey Long, uh, Trey Young reaches that level. Uh, so I, I would put Trey. If I was ranking the three, I'd put Trey Young first. Uh, I'd put Kyrie second, and I'd put Donovan Mitchell third. I think the price for Donovan is going to be really high. There's a lot of smoke with him going to one of the two New York teams, uh, be it the Knicks or the Nets. Uh, so I would still probably put the Lakers at best at third in the pecking order for Donovan, uh, but, but maybe potentially even lower. Uh, and then Kyrie, I mean, they, they've done the dance now multiple times. We know LeBron is, a, is still a huge fan of Kyrie. He'd love for him to be in LA, uh, but that would require Dallas to, to really, you know, I mean, they've been trending downward, although I really like what they did at the deadline. So that would require Dallas to flame out, you know, lose in the first round, not even make the playoffs and then look at, you know, maybe we got to pivot trade Kyrie Lakers can enter. And, you know, that's the destination he's had interest in previously. So um, I would probably put Trey for, I mean, Atlanta was interested in, in Austin Reeves. Obviously it was a player that they were fond of. I don't know if Austin Reeves plus three first gets you Trey young, uh, but I think that one is probably the most realistic of the three options. Then Kyrie, then Donovan. So before I give my idea, rapid fire, 
are the Lakers just suddenly out on DeJounte Murray? Or is that a move they'd be willing to make again in the summer? I don't think they're completely out on him, but I think Atlanta wants the price to go up, and I don't think the Lakers want to pay more than they offered. So if the if the price is going to go up, then they're out at that price. Because this is what I keep coming back to. Because like I, I've heard uh, behind the scenes that you know obviously if Atlanta did pivot this summer, that Trey Young and Clutch would be like, get me the hell out of here. You know what I mean? And so like I do think there's a version of this where where Trey Young becomes available. But t- to to the theme of this show, if the Lakers were to call up Atlanta this summer and be like, all right, three first round picks you know, Austin Reeves, Rui Hachimura, whatever they got to do to match salaries. And they close that deal. Now I've got Trey Young, no assets, LeBron James and Anthony Davis, and no damn players at the two and three that can defend and incredibly score on the other end of the floor. It's, it, it, it is a fundamental lack of understanding of what wins basketball games. And it, and it drives me completely insane because like, to me, the move would be like circle back with Atlanta this summer make a move like a two first round pick type of move for DeJounte Murray and then use that other first round pick for a legitimate two-way starting level wing to play at the three. Because give me Austin, DeJounte Murray, and let's just call him Dorian Finney-Smith with LeBron James and Anthony Davis over Trey Young, veteran minimum, Trey, uh, a veteran minimum, LeBron James, Anthony Davis, any day of the week. Any day of the week, I'd take that team. And so like, I, I just want to see them I want to see them approach this summer with the three draft picks, not as a means with which to bring in another star that will lead to the same problems that they've been dealing with, but rather find a way to actually bring the thing you need to win at the highest level in the NBA, which is just athletes on the perimeter that can defend and can dribble, shoot and pass like that. That is what they need. They've got to address it. To me, like I understand you need some sort of offensive firepower. I think that's been made abundantly clear. And to me, like a guy like DeJounte Murray could really help you on that front. But like, I, I think it'd be a big mistake for the Lakers to go all in on a star this summer. I think they'd find themselves in a very similar predicament to where they are right now. Is that something you agree with? Or do you feel like going after a star is the right move? I think it depends on the star, but we, we are talking about the perimeter defense and adding Trey Young isn't necessarily going to... Uh... <laughs> improve that situation i mean it's making it worse frankly uh you, you're going from mm-hmm. d'angelo russell at, uh let's just say the point of attack defensively at point guard to trey young like that is a downgrade trey young is smaller and he's the worst defender uh uh you know i, I know he, he's had you know maybe he's i think he's tried a little bit more this season and, and been a little bit more engaged at times but overall there, there's just a size limitation there uh and, and a physicality limitation mm-hmm. there that you're just always going to have um so and then, I mean, you can kind of pick apart any of those guys like Kyrie. I mean, there's all the questions off the court that he, he's been great this season, but this is like the longest stretch we've seen him uh, not cause any distractions. Uh, it, it almost feels like we're, we're waiting for the other shoe to drop at some point. Uh, and then with Donovan Mitchell, I, I think there's a level... I mean, he hasn't had that... Even Trey at least has had the, the, the conference finals run where you can say like, you know, he, he was able to uh, be the best player at times in that Philly series. Lead a team. Lead a team to the conference finals. Like Donovan Mitchell hasn't had that type of run yet. Uh, if anything, he, he's been, I think, in my opinion, on more disappointing playoff teams rather than teams that have met or exceeded expectations. Like some of those Jazz teams, that Cleveland team, I think most people picked them over New York last postseason. They got their butts kicked uh, in, in that series. So like, to me, I think there are legitimate questions. And now, of course, Donovan isn't going to be your number one in LA, but theoretically, that third guy you bring in can help bridge the gap to that next era of Lakers basketball and be a player that can grow with AD. So I think with all those three guys, uh, there, there are defensive questions for sure. And then there there are some just you know extra elements that you got to weigh in. So I'm with you. Like maybe I'm trying to think like maybe uh, D'Angelo opts in or you know exercises his player option uh then you can can i don't know the exact trade restrictions in terms of timeline of when he could be moved uh but you, you could trade him uh maybe package him with jhs maybe max and and you know a, a couple picks maybe you you have stronger protections on one pick like maybe that's something that they would consider for, for Dejounte. uh but i think they got to the point where they felt that whatever they were offering was more than enough uh, in terms of D'Lo versus DeJounte and the fact that Atlanta wasn't willing to do that 
and insisted on an Austin or insisted on a second first round pick, that to them was just a deal breaker at this point. So again, maybe they revisit things in the summer. We'll see how Tilo performs the rest of the way. We'll see how the, the playoffs go if the Lakers make it. Uh, but I think as of now, for, from my understanding, they felt that the Jante price was going a little bit too high and they weren't willing to, to match that. So I don't know if that would change over the summer. My guess would be no, but um, I'm with you though. I think the three-star build, it just, I mean, it hasn't worked. Like they, they haven't been able to get that guy over the last few years. Uh, they, they did get one guy and it was a disaster. It's one of the worst trades in NBA history. Yeah. Uh, and I, I do, I do think like if there's like a way to get maybe a, a bigger shot creator, like a, a wing shot creator, and you're going more with like Austin at point or, or maybe like a, a mid-level exception guy at point guard, like I, I'm more open to that. But the three-star build with like a small guard who can't necessarily defend, uh, I, I have some some questions about that, uh, especially with the, the current personnel on the roster. Yeah, I, I like the idea in the long term of a Trey Young, Anthony Davis kind of foundation. That pick and roll is going to be I just crazy. think it would, uh, of course, but I, I think it would just, I just think it would take like a legit two to three years to actually surround those two guys with the type of two-way athletes that you need. And now we're talking about trading LeBron James. And it's like, that's like a, to, to me, I, I, I don't want to like remove Trey Young from the conversation entirely. Just to me, once you make a deal for Trey Young where you've thrown all your assets in, you're not going to be good enough the next year uh, because you're not good enough on the margins. And so that to me is more of like a, let's go into the next era of Lakers basketball thing. And maybe that's the direction they go, but like, Chances are, if you if you do something like that, like I I, I don't think LeBron uh, is young enough to actually help you capitalize on it by the time you get the the requisite talent around. <laughs> 